Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us uh, continue the discussion on uh, compressor. So what we have so far discussed about the axial centrifugal compressor and we have also discussed about the characteristics and how to represent them and we discussed about the operating uh, region or rather the zone where it should be safely operational like the stall margin, surge margin and the choking point. Now, with that discussion, we will now move to the discussion of the axial flow compressor. So, this is where um, we have actually stopped. If you recall, these are the two characteristics curve. Uh, one is the pressure rise versus uh, non-dimensional mass flow rate and the other one is the efficiency versus uh, non-dimensional mass flow rate. So, these are the performance characteristics curve and this is what we have done. So, now we will move to the axial compressor. So, this is what now we will look at it. Now, axial flow compressor has a slightly different again it is an also uh, dynamic machine obviously this is also rotating uh, machine so and obviously you get the fluid to be compressed to a desired and here also there is a change in fluid momentum so there is a pressure change so overall engine performance strongly depends on the pressure rise and the efficiency now typically when the prc is low somewhere around 30 which is sort of subsonic commercial flight. So, in that case this kind of pressure rise is not possible to obtain through centrifugal compressor because using one single stage centrifugal compressor this kind of pressure rise cannot be obtained. So, you need multi staging and multi staging is not so need for multi staging and with centrifugal compressor this is not very handy or rather is not a feasible solution. So, one can go for now another thing what is important is that compressor also contributes lot of the weight to the engine. So, this is a massive part. So, in order to maintain the low weight of the engine, the compressor has to be designed properly. That means, the compressor design is important. Okay. So, so that engine weight is also kept low and the compressor is designed so efficient way that it can give you proper pressure rise. And these are all sort of an internal flows. So, these are having different challenges and one can easily go multi staging with axial compressor. So, that is quite easy and that is what is preferred in, in, in any modern days gas turbine engine. So, when you talk about multi staging this obviously puts some restriction. So, there are design conditions or rather the design constants are quite severe. So, main parameter that restricts the operation of axial flow compressor is stall. So, this is one of the important issue and stall as we have already discussed this is a separation of the boundary layer 
in uh, blade passage due to positive pressure gradient in the flow direction. So, stall it can lead to severe loss in efficiency, also it can have unsteadiness in the flow passage. So, which may lead to surge also, which may lead and when there is a surge this could be really detrimental for the structural rest conditions of the blade and the material. So, now again in this case also we will uh, use the for the angular momentum conservation. So, that is what this is also valid for axial compressor too and what we have already known that summation of the sum of the torque applied to the control surface would be m dot r v theta 2 r v theta 1. So, this is uh, sum of torque and these are net rate of outflow of angular momentum from control volume. This is applied to control surface angular momentum control volume. Okay. So, mostly the torque which is applied by the shaft connecting the turbine and the compressor. So, small negative torque uh, contribution due to tangential component the frictional forces which are negligible. Then in the flow is predominantly axial. So, uh, motion in radial direction is little not very much and also axial flow compressor has much greater mass flow rate capacity than the centrifugal one. The reason is, so it has higher mass flow rate capacity compared to centrifugal one because pi r square greater than 2 pi r b since r is higher than the beam. So, and that is why this is one of the preferred compressor in modern days gas turbine engine. Okay. So, you can simply look at and it should be like this is how it is connected. So, one can have that like this is tip, this should be hub, this is shaft. Now, one can have then rotor, stator, rotor, stator, rotor, stator. Similarly, one can have this rotor, stator, rotor, stator, rotor, stator. So, and these are the inlet guide vein or IGB and this is the complete housing and that is an kinetic of the rear. So, you have one pair of rotor plus stator is one single stage. Okay. So, stator is 
mounted or rather mounted on the housing stationary. So, stator is stationary component. So, typically average axial velocity is same at all stages. So, this is done by design. So, what happens? The mass flow rate is is constant. So, which means if rho goes up, A has to come down. So, that is why, so across the all stages if the mass flow rate is constant, so and velocity is also pretty much same, this remains constant. So, when the rho goes up, because the pressure rise is increasing, area decreases. So, that is what you have the blade height reduces in the direction of the flow. And the inlet vents are allowed to smooth entry of the flow to the system. So, first we will look at the stage dynamics. Okay. So, what we will look at is that so, here also it is an rotating machine. So, relative velocity is an important parameter or component. So, we will consider a single, now consider a single stage compressor. So, just for the simplified analysis or to keep the analysis simple, we just consider single stage and then imagine that a cylinder surface at the mean radius is unwrapped. So, if that happens, then what we will can see that we have let us say here is the series of rotor blade which are sitting there. Okay. So, this is the direction of the rotor. Then here would be the series of stator blade. So, that is important. So, this is stator. Now, this could be now the velocity triangle if I look at it. So, this goes, this comes down. This, so, this would be u1, v1, w1, and so beta 1 alpha 1. So, this is what happens to beta 1. So, this is at station 1 and then station 2 you have this triangle again. So, this is u 2 v 2 w 2. So, this is what happens alpha 2 v 2 and this is w 2 beta 2 and at 3 this is alpha 3. So, alpha is the absolute flow angle. So, this is to the axial direction, beta is the flow relative to the rotation. So, this is blade angle design point. Okay. Now, angular momentum changes as the fluid travels through a blade row because of pressure forces on the blade surface. So, pressure on the convex surface is relatively low 
on the concave surface is relatively high and this pressure gradient gives rise to the change in angular momentum. So, if you look at the blade uh, surface, this is uh, uh, how it may look like that this is the low side which is suction side, this is the high pressure side, this is the pressure side. Now, between 1 and 2 tangential component of absolute velocity increases rotor imparts the angular momentum to the air. So, in both rotor and stator, so in rotor and stator W decreases. So, pressure increases. So, typically in a radial displacement of fluid particle as it moves through a rotor blade row strictly speaking R 2 should not be R 1 which means u 2 should not be u 1 and as shown R 2 is greater than R 1. However, R 2 minus R 1 smaller than R 1. For the simplicity of the discussion, the approximation made here is that u 2 minus u 1 would be 0. So, u 2 would be u 1 which is u. So, this is the approximation which is made for the simplicity and to keep the discussion. Now, let us look at the velocity triangle at leading and trailing edge both of the rotor. So, this is at rotor. Okay. So, we have this and so So, this means this will go like that and that will go like that. So, this is there. So, this is W 2, this is U, this is B 2, this is W 1, this is V 1 this beta 1 alpha 1 beta 2 alpha 2 and this difference is delta v theta and this is v theta 1 so this is V theta 2. So, V theta 2 greater than V theta 1. Okay. And this component is V z 1, which is V z 2. Now, what we say here V z 1 would be V z 2. So, this is an design condition at mean radius of of design condition. But V z may vary. Now, if the velocity vectors of a particular particle crossing the rotor is given as we have shown here, so we can calculate the torque. So, now from angular momentum what we can write that T is m dot into r v theta 2 minus r v theta 1. Okay. So, that is what you can write. 
so the power would be which is t omega m dot omega r v theta 2 minus r v theta 1. So, the P s would be so this is one can write this one as v theta 2 minus r v theta 1. So, which is m dot u v theta 2 minus v theta 1. Now, you can find out the work done per unit mass which is P s by m dot which would be u v theta 2 minus v theta 1 which is u delta v theta. Now, similarly, so this is rotor for the stator we can. So, here the work done by the stator on the fluid equals to of course, even though delta V e not equals to 0. So, u is 0. So, there is however, a torque on the stator stator opposite to that on the fluid. So, the T s would be m dot r v theta 3 minus r v theta 2. Now, flow between the station 1, 2 and 3 is close to adiabatic because the heat transfer is almost negligible compared to the work done. So, now if we use the energy equation. So, this is adiabatic which will be m dot h naught 2 minus h naught 1, h naught 2 minus h naught 1 is w c which is u delta v theta. So, C p t naught 2 minus, so if you expand this v theta 2 minus v theta 1. So, what we get here that delta T naught divided by T naught 1 would be u delta v theta C p T naught 1. Now, flow is since the flow is adiabatic between 1 and 2, so no work done. So, flow is adiabatic between 1 and 2, no work done between 1 and 2. So, what we will get T naught 3 is T naught 2. So, which represents the inter stagnation temperature rise across the stage. So, if we draw the T s diagram, so this will look like so this is point 1, which is go P 1. So, 
1 to 2 so this is p2 2 to 3 so this is p3 so this is p 0 3. So, this is 0 3. So, this is 2 then p 0 1. So, this is 0 1 then this is 2 s then this is 3 s then this is 0 3 s ok. Now, from 2 if we go here, so that would be 3 s prime 0 3 s prime. So, this is 0 2. So, this is p 0 2 and this is p naught max. Okay. So, these are all the points how it looks like okay. and this is where you have t naught 1 and this is 1. So, that is how the now if the whole process is isentropic, so p naught would be p naught maximum. So, that the final stagnation pressure for the same work input would be p naught max but there are losses in rotor and stator. So, p naught 3 is less than p naught 2 or other p naught max. Now, if we look at the total stage efficiency which is this 3 minus h naught 1. So, this will determine the actual pressure rise by definition. So, one can write eta s t into C p t naught 3 minus t naught 1 C p 3 s minus t naught 1. So, we get t naught 3 s by t naught 1 1 minus 1 equals to eta s t delta t naught by t naught 1. So, we get t naught 3 s by 1 plus eta s t delta t naught by t naught 1. Now, also we have 1 plus eta s t delta t naught by t naught 1. Now, we can write the p naught 3 by p naught 1 which would be t naught 3 s by t naught 1 gamma over gamma minus 1 and if we replace this then uh, so this would be 1 plus eta s t delta t naught by t naught 1 which is gamma by gamma minus 1. So, this would 1 plus u delta v theta C p t naught 1 divided by gamma by gamma minus 1. So, this is what you get. Now, one can see as u increases, so and or or delta v theta increases, 
PRC also goes up. So, PRC means P2 by P1 goes up, which means P2 goes up. Okay. And obviously, P1 minus P2 also to some extent goes up. Now, the, this is true only up to a point, because beyond certain limit there could be after certain point the boundary layer separation would occur. So, boundary layer separates A at blade surfaces, B end walls of blade passage. Okay. So, these are the two conditions which would be beyond certain point of this pressure rise, this may possibly happen when the boundary layer separates and you have blade surfaces and end walls of blade passage where the flow boundary layer separation takes place. So, this actually prevents further increase in PRC. So, you can see that it is not an indefinite that you can keep on increasing PRC uh, up to any limit that you wish. So, there are certain restrictions which may come like um, there could be flow separation and rather boundary layer separations in the blade surface and end wall defect would be there. So, this will actually restrict the uh, indefinite increment in the pressure rise. So, we will stop here and we will continue the discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.